Hi everyone and thanks for watching. My name's Scott and I'm here to bring you another costuming tutorial sponsored by Costumers for Christ. In one of our previous tutorials I demonstrated how to modify a Ruby's Batman cowl which you can see here in this picture. And ever since posting the video on how to modify that cowl we've gotten a lot of questions about how to make the cape and the hood that go along with it. So in today's video I'm going to demonstrate how to make a Batman cape and hood that can be used with any necklace cowl or even with a cowl that does have a neck attached to it. Now as always the first thing I want to do is show you what you're going to need, what materials you'll need, and that means you're going to need a measuring tape that goes at least 72 inches, you're going to need a pair of scissors, and this is not necessary but I think it's very helpful, a chalk straight line. Now these can be bought in just about any hardware store and they're typically used for marking a straight line on wood that would then be cut with a saw but we're going to use it to mark a straight line on our fabric and of course the last thing you'll need is your fabric and for this project I highly recommend a lightweight pleather now sometimes you can get lucky and find a, a nice lightweight pleather at uh, Joanne Fabrics but generally I think you're going to be better off if you order this online you can go to spandexhouse.com or spandexworld.com and look at their stretch pleather material. That's what this is. It, and the material you use needs to have at least a two-way stretch because it's going to pull over your head um, and the hood will be attached to the cape when you put it on. So it's got to be able to stretch as it goes on. You could even use just plain uh, spandex for this if you'd like to, but I prefer pleather. Now, uh, which, whichever fabric you use, you're going to need about six yards of it. So six yards of the fabric is what you're going to need for this project. And that's all the materials that we need right now. You're also going to have to be able to sew. So you need some basic sewing skills. Won't be very hard. We'll walk you through that a little bit later on. But that's all we need for now. So let's go ahead and start cutting some fabric. Okay, well, as you can see, this project is going to require a lot of space. And I've got my fabric stretched all across my living room floor here. So once you get your fabric all laid out and you've got a big workspace to work with, the first thing you're going to need is your tape measure. What we do first is we measure 72 inches from the edge of the fabric. This is the length of your Batman cape from your neck down to your feet. Now, some of that's going to get trimmed away and some of it's going to get hemmed. So for somebody that's six feet tall, like me, six feet of fabric is the perfect length to start with and that's what we're going to cut this at is six feet so you're going to mark off a little dot where that six foot line is 72 inches and then the next thing we need is our chalk straight line and this is a lot easier to do if you have a second pair of hands so I've asked my son to help me out with this He's going to take one end oh, of the straight line and he's going to place it and hold it tight at the opposite corner of the fabric. And I'm going to take this end and I'm going to hold it tight at the dot that we just made. Then all you have to do is snap that and you get a nice straight line to cut. Thank you. So now we're going to cut that line. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this edge of the cape and we're going to fold it over so that it meets the edge that we just cut. There you go. Now we get our tape measure back out and we make sure that everything's where it should be. So this edge is 72 inches, just like it should be. But you'll notice this edge is a little bit longer. So we're going to trim down this edge 
so that it's 72 inches as well. I'm just going to go ahead and mark a straight line with a ruler because this will get trimmed off. You won't see that. So now this side and this side are both 72 inches. This is the top part of the cape, this is the bottom part of the cape. But with a Batman cape, we all know that Batman has scallops across the bottom of his cape, those little raised edges that, that curve downward. So that's the next thing we're going to do. And in order to do that evenly, we're going to fold it over again so that everything lines up. And these edges should come perfectly together right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at about 7 inches off the, from the bottom edge and I'll just snip straight through all four layers of this fabric. You come in and what you're going to do is you're going to cut sort of like a quarter of a circle. And you want to leave about an inch from the edge. So this is what I just cut out. And when you unfold it, it looks like this. That's the scallop that we've removed from Batman's cape. And this is what's left there. So. Come up here with me. And now you can see we have one panel of Batman's cape. When you wear that, it should drape right about there. And now all we have to do is make five more of these. But now that you have this panel, you use this as your pattern to cut out the rest of them. So go ahead and cut out five more and then we'll go sew them together. Okay, when sewing the cape together, what you want to do is take two of your panels and each panel should be identical to the other one, so it really doesn't matter which panels you pick. But you're going to take two of them and put them face to face, that is, pleather sides together. Lay one flat on top of the other, make sure your edges line up carefully, and then feed it into your sewing machine. Now for this, I'm going to use an overlocking stretch stitch to seal the edge. Um, I think that gives the edge the nicest, cleanest look that you can get. However, if you're new to sewing or if your machine just doesn't have that function on it, you can also do this with a straight stitch. Make sure to lock the stitch at the beginning. And then just go straight down the edges. to the very end you want to make sure that you lock your stitch again and then pull your needle up pull the fabric out give yourself about six inches of thread tuck that away and now you're done with that first couple of panels now the nice thing about working with this um, pleather material is that it doesn't slip and slide around a lot just like spandex or other fabrics do and so it's uh, it's real easy to just stitch without having to pin or mark the fabric at all before you sew. And now you should have your first two panels stitched together. What you're going to do next is just grab another panel, 
lay it on top of one of these two and do the exact same thing and then do that again until you've sewn all six panels together as one piece. All right, once you have all six panels sewn together, you should have one very large piece like this. Now, you'll notice that the tips all come together right here. And so in order to put your head through there, we're gonna have to cut a semicircle out of there. We'll do that, and then after doing that, we'll go sew the hood together. Okay, here you can see the cape unfurled completely with the hole that we've cut out for the neck. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch this piece to this piece, but only for about an inch. That way you'll be able to pull the cape over your head. Okay, so I went ahead and stitched the front of the cape together with just a short one inch stitch. Uh, and this is only temporary. I'm going to go ahead and remove that stitch after the whole thing's finished. But that allows us to put the cape on, pulling it over the head, and seeing how it fits and drapes. And you can see that the, the collar comes right up around my neck. It's a nice snug fit, but it goes over my head easily. And that's what you want to go for. Now that the cape is done, we're going to go ahead and work on the hood now. Alright, when it comes to making the hood, it can be a little bit more complicated. So I simplify things by making a pattern for you to follow, and you can download this pattern in the description below. Print it out, and you'll get four pages that look like this. What you're going to do is you're going to cut out each piece, and then take the edges together, A meets A, B meets B, and what you'll end up with is two pieces that look like this. You're going to take those two pattern pieces, lay them on your fabric, trace around them, and then flip them over and trace around them again. That will give you four pieces all together. I already have these cut out, so you should have two pieces that look like this, facing away from each other, and two pieces that look like this, that curve away from each other. Once you've got all four of your hood pieces, now we're ready to start sewing. Okay, when it comes to sewing the hood, what you're going to do first is you're going to take the two face pieces, put the pleather sides together, and we're going to stitch this side together. This side will remain open. We're just going to stitch this side together. And for this, uh, I recommend, again, using an overlocking straight stitch. Uh, if you don't have that option on your sewing machine, you could also use a stretch straight stitch or a zigzag stitch, but you really want something that's going to stretch a little bit. Um, so just using a regular straight stitch probably isn't the best thing for this project. As always, make sure you lock your stitch at the end. Pull it out, snip the thread, place that back behind, and this is what we should have now. This side stitched together, and so when you pull that back the other way, you have the front part of a mask. Put your face in like that, and this is where it'll sit. Um, of course, we're going to have to cut the face out on that, but we'll do that in just a minute. Next, we're going to take the other two pieces, these two, put them again face to face, and this time we're going to sew this edge together, leaving this edge separate still. back of our mask finished. It unfolds like that. And this will sew 
to this. So now you're going to take, again, take the pleather sides, put them together, line up the seams at the top, which you can see right here, and then just follow that line down. You'll take the two bottom corners and you'll start stitching them together. Now you'll notice that these aren't exactly the same shape. They curve slightly differently, but they should end up being the same length. So once you've attached them, everything will be correct. All right, it looks like everything lined up just right. And so now we have a completed hood. All we have left to do now is cut a portion out for the face um, because Batman's face shouldn't be covered in leather. And um, I also like to cut out small holes for the ears just so that it makes it easier to hear when you're wearing this and then wearing a cowl over top of it. So I'm gonna ask my wife to help me a little bit here. This, having a second person just makes it easier to mark off lines right around your face. So I'll just feel his face and kind of just go around his chin here. So I'll start up, sorry, hand. <laughs> start up right above the eyebrows. Are you okay? <laughs> Might need to take a breathing break. All right, and I'm just using a, a metallic Sharpie marker and going around the face under the chin and around the other side. Okay, you wanna take a breather real quick before I get the ears? And then I'm just gonna mark a little X on his ears so that he knows where to cut the hole over there and over there. And we're done. All right, there we go. So now we're just gonna cut that out and then the next step is attaching this hood to the cape that we've already sewn. So let's do that next. Okay, as you can see, I cut the face out for the hood and I also made little holes for the ears. I also tightened the neck up just a little bit because I have a head that's smaller than a lot of people, so I had to tighten that to, to get it to look quite right. Um, and now that we've got the cape and the hood done, the last step is sewing the two of them together. So I'm going to ask my wife again if she would grab a black sharpie and trace where the, the cape sits on the hood so that we have a nice line of where they're supposed to connect. That, if you look underneath, I put the hood on first and then put the cape over it so that the cape sits on top of the hood as she marks this off. Okay, now we simply Pull the cape off, and you're going to flip the cape inside out, and then pull the hood off a little tighter now. And we're going to trim off right along where the sharpie was marked. Okay, I've trimmed away the excess from uh, the hood, so now we're going to take the cape, like I said, inside out. we're going to put the hood in the hole, in the neck hole. Uh, the hood should be right side out, but you're going to put it in upside down so that the front seam of the neck lines up with the front seam of the neck on the cape. And then we're simply going to sew around in a circle connecting the cape to the hood.
Once you're done sewing, and you flip it back right side out, you should have a cape and hood that are all one attached piece like this. And when you put it on, you simply pull it over your head like that. Make sure everything's snug and in place. And you should have a nice finished project. Now it's up to you whether or not you want to hem the uh, sides and the bottom of the cape. Now on me, I like my cape to hit the floor and as you can see it comes all the way down to my feet and touches the ground. Um, I'll probably go ahead and hem it, that'll take about a quarter inch off. Um, but if you get the right kind of pleather, you don't even really have to do that. So this is finished as it is. Uh, why don't we take a look at the finished product? Alright, well this is what your finished product should look like once you get the hood and the cape sewn together. As you can see, the cowl is a separate piece, which we did in a previous tutorial, and that just slides on right over top of the hood. And once you get that on and in place properly, you should have at least what looks like a seamless one-piece cape and cowl combination. And the great benefit of having a necklace cowl like this is that you can turn your head without the problems that you would have in a regular cowl that has a neck that comes down. Um, so I hope that this tutorial has been beneficial and helpful for you. I hope that you've been able to follow the instructions without any problems. And if you have any uh, problems along the way and you have questions you want to ask, go ahead and put those in the comment section and I'll try to respond to them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching and God bless all of you.